A charity supporting older people learning digital skills says some pensioners are struggling to apply for pension credit because they aren't online. Well, the government is, of course, encouraging over 65s to apply for the benefits so that they can continue receiving winter fuel payments that are worth up to £300. But a third of pensioners don't have a computer, believe it or not, I can believe it. Our East Midlands reporter Will Hollis joined a digital skills hub in Lincolnshire with more on this. We'll see as we pull it closer and closer we can get really close. In the digital age the ageing are getting to grips with a changing world. I don't do YouTube or TikTok or anything like that. I haven't even got a clue what it is. At Ragby's Town Hall in the heart of rural Lincolnshire. Four and one, 41. The weekly social club is keeping the area's older residents connected. Bingo! Not just in person, online too. The drop-in sessions, organised by charity Lynx Digital, give support for online banking and appointments. Now, help applying for pension credit is also a priority. If you put the pension credit, this page will come up. Yvonne is one of 10 million pensioners who could lose the winter fuel allowance. Labour is scrapping the universal benefit as part of a £22 billion saving plan while encouraging older people to apply for pension credit. I'm about to get my bank statements and everything and they're going to go through it again to see if I can apply. The government uses an online calculator where people can check if they're eligible for the benefit. Project manager Rich says some pensioners are struggling to apply without support. We all know things are going to be cut down and, and we're here to try and help them, you know, and it's great in saying you can apply for things. There's a checker they can do online, but it's an online checker, so, you know, those people who are not online couldn't do it. Age is one of the biggest contributors to digital exclusion. A third of people over 65 are offline. Councillor William Gray is portfolio holder for Better Ageing at East Lindsay District Council. Often in rural communities, they're older communities that haven't followed the trends, haven't been upskilled as much as other communities have. If they are left behind, loneliness, isolation, ill health, unfortunately, and it can just add an aid deprivation, and that's what we want to avoid. The government says some 880,000 pensioners are eligible for the credits and can apply over the phone or by post as well as online. The digital age offers a world of virtual opportunity, but the digital divide is enhancing real-world problems. If it all goes wrong, I shut it down and start again. Will Hollis, GB News in Rugby. Now, in a GB News exclusive, we can reveal that there's been a surge in heated blanket sales as millions of elderly people are set to lose their winter fuel payments due to those cuts. John Lewis uh, alone saw a 173% increase in heated blanket sales in comparison to the same period last year. And Google data revealed the increase in sales came minutes after Rachel Reeves declared means-tested winter fuel payments will be introduced. Dear me, what a sad state of affairs. Um, Oxbus Energy CEO has said energy suppliers should be helpful to the government and supply extra support to pensioners losing their winter fuel allowances. Well, let's speak now to consumer expert Zoe Whitman. Um, there is clearly a link between these two factors then, isn't there? The sale going up and the announcement of this policy. Um, you know, it's a dangerous time as the winter months are approaching for many pensioners. Yeah, and I think that we've seen this for the last few years, haven't we? I think we're getting to that point that anything that triggers a conversation about what am I going to do this winter is going to affect what people are buying and how people are preparing themselves for colder months. What about uh, electric blankets? Are they the most energy efficient, Zoe? Do you know? Maybe you're not uh, equipped to answer this question, but is a, a, a humble hot water bottle maybe not a, a better option? Well, do you know, um, Octopus Energy did some research into how much it costs to use an electric blanket versus heating your home. They found that it costs about £4 a day to heat the average home, whereas it costs between two and four pence per hour to use an electric blanket. And I was speaking to um, a specialist yesterday who actually builds camper vans because this is the kind of environment where people would be using something like an electric blanket to make sure that the space is warm and thinking about efficiency and how you can you know, use um, like solar power, for example, to fuel that kind of device. So they're thinking of this from a very different, um, a very different 
problem they're trying to solve. But uh, the guy I was speaking to was saying that, yeah, it might be less than 10 pence per hour. So it's well known that electric blankets use less energy. And we are seeing people, I, I speak to people who are saying I'm wearing a heated jacket and, you know, things like this. This has definitely been a trend since the um, winter, like the fuel crisis that we've had over the last few years. But what's really important to remember is that uh, electric blankets aren't right for everybody. So yeah, hot water bottles are definitely a consideration. I think that we've got to be really aware right now, if you know, for anyone who's a pensioner looking into what am I going to do to get through this winter? Do I need to buy a new hot water bottle or do I need to get a, an electric blanket? There are also considerations around health and safety. Um, I've been looking on the Fire Brigade's website, so London Fire Brigade have got some information about when it isn't appropriate to use an electric blanket um, if you're using particular devices to support you if you have a disability or if you're using flammable creams like emollient creams. So I think we've got to really start a conversation about um, health and safety just to make sure that the people who actually are probably more likely to be thinking about these solutions, who also are the more vulnerable people and um, are aware of whether this is the right thing for them to do, where, the right place for them to invest their money. Because you mentioned earlier that um, energy suppliers or Octopus had said that other energy suppliers should be thinking about how they support their customers. Um, Octopus do have a fund. They do have a fund to support people who are in real hardship. So there might be something like that available for you as well. And I think the best thing to do is actually speak to your energy supplier um, if you've got questions and concerns about your bills this winter. See, Zoe, I'm a huge fan of an electric blanket um, myself. And, and my husband even has one of those gilets with the heat packs in. We live in a freezing house. <laughs> but what my concern is, is if people are choosing to use those rather than heat their homes. As we use that more as a luxury, really, to kind of add a bit of comfort. But if people are choosing to use those instead of heating their homes, that accompanies a whole nother raft of problems. Things like mould, damp, um, you know, whether or not their bedroom, the temperature that that might reach, you know, in an unheated house, carries with it a whole mm. lot of other risks. You know, these are sort of items that should be supplementary rather than an alternative, surely, to heating your home. Do you think, though, there's a wider problem here? You know, this, this has been a problem that's been with us for several years now, um, def definitely since the pandemic. I, you know, my bills must be four times as much as they were in 2019. Um, and we live on a small island. We import nearly everything. We're facing a situation where we've got huge inflation. Um, most of our energy is imported and we are at the mercy of wholesale markets. So we are going to be in this situation that, that, you know, some electric blankets aren't going to solve the problem. Um, we, we know that we're going to start paying more for energy this winter. The, the cap is going to change. So we're expecting bills to be higher. Um, maybe we need to be thinking more about how do we fuel the country? Um, this is obviously a massive crisis. This is a huge crisis for lots of people. Um, the government's under a lot of pressure to make sure that money is allocated in the way that fits with their particular, uh, their plans for the future. But we have a bigger problem as a country in terms of how we source our energy. Um, and maybe there needs to be investment in other places. I know it's going to take a long time to pay to pay off, but there must be better ways for things to be done. Um, I'd like to see grants for solar panels <laughs> being brought yes, in. You know, there are things that, that we can that do. That was a big thing a few years ago, wasn't it? We were about to do it and then the grants were taken away. Bring that back. <laughs> It'd be great. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Zoe yeah, Whitman, thank you. Me. Thank you for joining us this morning. Stay warm. Um, do you know what? I, I think this whole conversation is a bit of a red herring, actually, because scrapping the winter fuel allowance is saving something like one to one and a half billion pounds. Mm. Yet, if you just halved the 11 billion we're sending abroad for climate aid, to countries like Africa or, or continents like Africa, just half it, perhaps. If you want, if you have to do it, half it to six billion, mm -hmm. you'd solve that problem, you know, in a second. You wouldn't have pensioners freezing their backsides off this winter, and many, according to Labour's own research, many dying as well. Mm.